I was recently telling a friend of mine that I don't like turn-based RPGs and video games. And he was quizzical and said, James, you play Dungeons and Dragons. That's a fair enough point. But lately, I don't like turn-based combat in Dungeons and Dragons either. Turn-based combat can feel really slow. If you're still using turn-based combat in your games, then maybe your combat feels a little slow. And more importantly, not at all like the active, engaging imagery that we see in RPG books. The images in the books really look like there's a lot going on in the fight and not one side attacking and then the other side attacking. And so today I want to talk about the alternative initiative system in Rick Stump's Far Realms uh, document because it really is a game changer. It really makes the combat feel like like the images look. It makes the combat feel like everything's happening at once simultaneously. So I'm going to take some time and, and try to explain that because I've had trouble explaining it in text and maybe talking about it will be easier. And while what I'm going to say may sound extra slower than, than turn-based combat, it's really the opposite. It really goes so fat quickly. And I say it might feel slow because everyone's rolling initiative every single round. Uh, everyone has possible input every segment, whether it's the segment they rolled initiative on or not. And so it sounds like it would be so slow, but, ha but it's really not. Now keep in mind that everything about this is made as a, an alter alternate initiative system to AD&D, and it makes a lot of assumptions that you're in that system. But I think it might be possible to translate it to other systems. And so I put some thought into how to do it for 5th edition, which needs playtesting, obviously. And we'll be talking about that later. So uh, just like any other AD&D initiative system, it's got the 10 segments of six seconds each for a one minute round but the special thing about it is that the movement is that during each segment each character can move whether it's the segment they've rolled their initiative in on or not and so that's really the key is that as you roll into initiative the dungeon master doesn't say oh you're on segment two so now this is your segment but rather everything is happening very simultaneously so playing with Rick and, and at my own table now uh, what you'll do is you'll say segment one and maybe players have some movement that they want to use on segment one or maybe their initiative comes up on segment one and if they do then they say so right they say I'd like to move over toward, the, toward this door or I'd like to start flanking the enemy or I would like to back up a little bit and then the enemies the monsters can also make those same movements right they could follow them as they back up or they could try to cut them off as they go toward the door and everyone moves on every segment and so it's a very active scene and then if anyone has rolled on on segment one then they might take an action but very quickly the dungeon master says all right now segment two segment three Segment four, okay, you've arrived at that door that you were moving toward. You're now ready to block it. Or you've you've retreated and you're up against this wall. You're going to need to make a new decision about where to go. Segment five. And so the play is very lively and moves along and, and really feels more like, um, like what you imagine when you're reading uh, an active novel or when you're seeing these pictures in, that come in the RPG books. And, and so I think that's really the key. But there's a few other things that, that change to go along with this real-time feel. Uh, first of all, surprise um, is rolled individually for each character in the party, and then could be individual or group in for the monsters. And then that surprise, whether it's one segment or two segments or three segments of surprise, is tacked onto the front of their initiative. And so those characters that are surprised are more vulnerable and and can be attacked as if with a full round by um, other characters who are not surprised in the initiative. So the initiative is rolled with a d6. You're probably familiar with that. There's adjustments for dexterity, one for 17 dexterity and two for 18 dexterity, and that will, will bump you down. And then I think uh, three and four dexterity get a, a plus two and a, min and a plus one respectively. 
as well, although I've not yet seen a character that, that low. Um, and then uh, that's that's the f that indicates the first segment on which the character can act. So it's not. Uh, when I say act, I mean a attack or start casting a spell. So either either fire a missile weapon or make a weapon attack or or start casting a spell. So while the movement is all real time, there's this jostling and and posturing and and fighting for position and and looking for an opening that happens between people who are engaged until they get the opportunity to make that attack, which is, is the initiative that they've rolled. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is that it spreads out the multiple attacks. So someone using a bow who gets two attacks, they're not suddenly snapping off two attacks um, in, the, in, the, in their spot in the initiative. They're getting that first attack, and then three segments later they're getting the next so say they roll the two on initiative they'll be able to shoot on two and then shoot on five again or if they're using something like a dart and have three attacks or a high level fighter then it's a two segment gap so that they could shoot on two or throw the dart on two throw a dart on four and then throw a dart on six and and if they roll the six then it would be six eight and ten right which, which uh, you can see why we need the ten segments um, similarly for fighters against um, oh, against nuisance enemies, I can't remember the exact term, but but low HD monsters, vermin, um, the fighters can get many many attacks, and so their initiative may even against those types of enemies be bumped back earlier, so that they're attacking not regardless of what they roll, um, their initiative is starting on one or two, for example, if they have five attacks. Then, then what they roll determines whether they start on one or two, and then after that, they're attacking every other segment. Um, part of what makes this so lively is that you don't know where the opponent is going to be in the initiative, and and you can wait until uh, until you're safe to start casting a spell, right? And then and then you're going to have that that spell duration matter. Um, one of the keys to this is also that that there's a sequence within the segment as well because so many things are happening simultaneously you need to know what really happens first and so that sequence I'll describe quickly is that missile weapons are fired and then casters decide if they're going to start casting spells and then the missile weapons hit and and so that's going to be two steps later on the missile weapon because sometimes you might say well i'm going to wait to see if the mage casts a spell and then i'll shoot my arrow but if you do that you're now firing on on that third step and so it's going to become two steps later which is after the movement and so potentially somebody could could move in the way or the the wizard casting could um could possibly try to move a little bit or, or drop their spell because they see you fire and you could end up missing because it now overlaps the movement but it's weapon fire missile fire initiated spell casting initiated missile weapons hit on the third step fourth step is movement and then melee attacks and then spell casting ends and that's interesting because that means that that one segment spells initiate Weapons hit, movements hit, melee hits, and then that one segment spell finishes, right? So even a one segment spell can be interrupted this way. But it also means that you know that you initiate early in the round and you finish late in the round. And so you know exactly, I've, I've seen some discussions trying to figure out um, whether that three segment spell that you start on segment four ends on segment six or on seven, right? And, and this makes it very clear that you're ending on six because you started early in four went for all of four, all of five, and now your spell is going to end on, on at the end of six. And so what it gives is it gives this very dynamic situation where even when it's not your, your segment of the initiative, you don't really have a turn that you own in this situation. You have a time when you get to make your attack, but you can be acting the whole time, right? And it really behooves you to pay attention to what's going on because things are just moving along and you can be be making a difference during that time you can be finding a window to climb out of and drop down behind the ogres just in time to get your attack in in segment four as one of my players did and then 
proceeded to lead the ogre on a merry chase um, because the movements could be simultaneous, right? And so while the fight was going on, we didn't have to wait until the ogre's segment to say, okay, now he moves really far. Oh, and then it's yours, and then you move really far. The movement was all simultaneous, all coordinated, and it allows for these these uh, combats that are more fluid, where one side might be retreating while another side is pushing forward, um, rather than waiting on this round, they all completely disengaged and moved back their full movement, and then on the next segment, on the segment when, when the players are going, they get to move all the way up to them again. You can have these these slow segmented retreats while the fight continues to go on. And so it's really been a game changer for me. I introduce new players to it and the new players say, I can't believe I've never seen this before. And I say, well, I don't know that, that there are very many people who run this besides Rick and now myself. And and they're just astounded, right? That this this system isn't more popular, isn't more well known, because it is so, so great. And even even Rick himself in Far Realms says here alternate system, where it's, he's just making a suggestion, but really, huge recommendation to use use this system from Far Realms. Go pick up Far Realms, um, if for nothing else than to get this system. It's got a lot of other good treasures in it, but this really really does change the game. And so I mentioned that I was going to talk about how to adapt it to other systems, specifically to 5th edition, because 5th edition is very popular right now. And I really think I've got a blog post where I significantly complain about the, the combat system of 5th edition and how, how it really bogs everything down. And I really think that this could, could be a major improvement. And so I've put some thought into how to do it. So... Um, the first thing would be to go back to the 10 segments per round uh, and, and then and then roll into initiative the same way that you do um, well I say the same way you can't do exactly the same as far realms because unless you come up with new modifiers right you could say that you have to have these really high dexterities for modifiers but if we want to stick more or less with fifth edition mechanics we can have their initiative modifiers stay the same but then you're looking at anything from like a minus one up to a uh, plus 10 right if you're getting the alertness feet and so I think that that we stick with the 10 segments but we start from the top counting down because they're used to having high segments be better and you, you get the pluses from your dexterity instead of minuses and I think we roll a d8 right most a lot of characters are gonna have a plus two and so that D8 is going to be enough that almost everyone can get to that top segment. And even even with Rick's system, when you got the, the minus two, you're frequently getting a zero or a negative one with, with some of these characters who have exceptionally high dexterities. And, and that's okay. It just means that they go before everybody else. So we make it a D8 plus your dexterity modifier to roll in. Now each segment you're getting I'm gonna give you a fifth of your movement speed right because movement speeds in fifth edition are anywhere from like 25 to to like maybe 45 for really exceptional you know monk wood elf kind of characters who get some extra movement so a uh, fifth of your speed in feet every round because everything's divisible by five um, actions the, what is classified as an action in 5th edition you take on the initiative that you've rolled and so if that action is an attack action and your character has multiple attacks like say you're a 5th level fighter and so you have two attacks then uh, that, mul that attack action initiates that multi-attack and so you would get the attack on the segment that you use that action and then three segments later the same as in the in the far realms um the dodge action you keep exactly the same the way I have it written up now it the dodge action is effective for the rest of the round following the segment in which you use it and since you can only use the action uh, on the segment that you rolled um, you might think about not doing that if if it's already late in the round and it's too late to be dodging that round um, or it really in this next part uh, oh so I'll get to that later so the dash action same thing double your speed but for the rest of the of the round so again something that you might not might think 
maybe it's too late to dash if it's late in the round and and you haven't gotten an opportunity to to do that yet bonus actions i'm going to say you can do any time but not in the same section same uh, segment that you already had an action or an attack from multi attack so if you had your two attacks and an offhand weapon that you were going to use a bonus action to attack with and on segment one you initiate your attack with your your main weapon then you'd be eligible to attack with your main weapon again on segment four but on either segment two or three I would allow you to use your bonus action to attack with with that offhand weapon um, this makes bonus actions makes things like the the cunning action for the rogue much more interesting because it, the rogue is getting you know hide and dash and disengage and we were just talking about it dodge as bonus actions with that cunning action and it makes rarely do I see players use those and even when I play rogues I, I don't see much reason to to use the cunning action to get those things except maybe the disengage or the dash to to get to specific places but this means that you can use those things much earlier than anyone else because you can use that bonus action on segment one regardless of what you rolled to to get that effect for the rest of the round um, there's a real sticking point with spells that I'm still working out how to how to handle um, casting times would have to be figured out in segments for all of the spells uh, to convert from fifth edition I toyed with the idea of saying that it's one segment per level of the spell um, except there's a lot of spells that have exceptionally long casting times and there's high level spells that, that feel like they should be short and so there would be exceptions to that general rule um, there's also questions about duration uh, right now a lot of spells have a duration of one minute with the intention being that that's 10 rounds because they're six second rounds but now we have six second segments and a one minute round and so those would only last one round if you left them at one minute so I would bump all of those up to 10 minutes um, to, to make them still be viable so that they're active for 10 rounds but all in all I think that it's not a huge stretch to apply this initiative system to fifth edition I really think it would be, it would change the game even more than it changes the game for first edition which which I already believe it to be a huge game changer for first edition I believe it, it would be an enormous game changer for for fifth edition and so once again I recommend checking this out it's a huge game changer I hope that my explanation helped people to understand it um, it's it's difficult to explain without actually playing it but it really makes the combat feel the way the pictures make the combat look and and that's an exceedingly valuable thing to me to have the combat not be your turn and then my turn and then your turn and my turn but rather this this flowing entity where where a lot of things are happening all at once and it really feels alive so thank you for watching uh, look in the description for links to to my fifth edition proposal and maybe a little more uh, description about this and please also uh, f try to look in the description to find a link to the far realms to pick up on um, on Rick's Gumroad because it really is incredible and and it will change your game thanks for watching